museum is spectacular. We have video taken photos and we show everybody that. What is your favorite part? Do you have a favorite part of the museum? No, not really. I can I can tell you the thing that I paid for more than anything else, which would be that uh, what you you've covered before, the moose from the Zinsa's Enchanted Forest. Except the building itself. <laughs> but other than that, everything else pretty much even out. But as you see, we have a section for every holiday. Uh, we have the the Easter stuff. We have the Christmas. This was actually the uh, this was the, the Christmas tree that my dad bought the year that we built this house in 1965. So that's our original tree. Most of the original lights and the original ornaments on it. So, but of course, all of this stays here. This stays here all the time. <laughs> Tim, that is great. Your very first tree in this house that's when it was new. That's uh, that's more of a '90s type thing where they they made the little characters trimming the tree. Uh, there's a there's a, a Looney Tunes version of it over in the other corner over there. I don't think I've ever seen this one though, and a lot of people have not seen that probably was not sold for too many years. Uh, a lot of times they would make things like About that. what year was that? I I honestly can't remember, but I want to say around 1994, somewhere around in there. I don't recall seeing that. <laughs> That's neat. But, um, of course, some of this stuff over here, this is the really old stuff. People people might remember when uh, the uh, Pazitz department store in Birmingham uh, had the Enchanted Forest every Christmas. Uh -huh. where. They would set it up in a big room where you would walk through the the trail through the snow and see all see the elves making toys. Well, as far as I know, this moose is the only piece of the enchanted forest that survives to this day. When uh, when Pazitz went out of business, there was a fella who uh, went to the the store fixtures sale and he bought the moose and kept it in his living room for about 20 years and then he sold it to me for a couple of arms and a leg. But uh, I. Wondered where you acquired but that. I, uh, of course, I had been uh, I had been documenting the history of the Enchanted Forest for a long time, and up on the wall back there, you'll see one of Pazitz's newspaper ads that he actually has the moose in the ad. So it's kind of nice to to uh, recreate them. And you might not be able to tell it, but on the table back there is a photo of the moose when he was in the Enchanted Forest with that you know sort of snow-looking curtain hanging in front of him. <laughs> I think that he's the nicest looking moose I've ever seen. <laughs> well, uh, you meet a lot of them in Walker County. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was a that was a real find there, Tim. <laughs> yeah. Maybe one of these days I'll find some more pieces, but I rather doubt it because they, they were kind of scattered all over after the store closed. But... Um, did the store close? Because it's closed at the end of 1986. It became McRae's after that. Now, of course, I mentioned that I was a puppeteer. I, I worked with, with uh, Cousin Cliff for years and years. And when he had his program on Channel 6 in the, the early 90s, and then he was with Don Early and his uh, station for a while, that was the puppet that they gave me to use. They, they had this caricature of Cliff built and called him Uncle Fuzzy. And so Cliff and I would do routines with Uncle Fuzzy where I would come on. And uh, Uncle Fuzzy, was he was almost a Yosemite Sam type character, but he would come on and say, you know, Well, howdy there, nephew. I want to tell you about old Uncle Anthracite. And Cliff would say, Uncle Anthracite? I've never heard of him. Yeah, he was a fellow that invented fireproof coal. <laughs> so we would, but Cliff and I both, we both knew every old joke that had ever been written. So when one of us started a routine, the other one knew where we were going with it. And we would just. Uh, so it was ad lib, the program well, we was? Would, we would have a script, but a lot of times we'd go off the script and just start making stuff. <laughs> Chevy, and here is that 26 Cadillac, the Townsend family. The car.
Garvin Hill Marching Band. It was so nice of them to come. Another little ATV with some children having a great time. A float coming up with some youngsters that are really enjoying this parade. some out-of-town visitors. Okay, this is Mike and Nell McAnally, and where do you two live? Cleveland, Tennessee. Aha, uh -huh. and we told them about this tree lighting, Christmas decorating project downtown, and talked them into coming down, and I will confess, they're actually house guests of myself and my husband, Larry, because this is his sister, Nell Lee McAnally. Yeah. <laughs> more, more visitors from out of town. More they, aliens. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even need a passport. No. This is Richard and Shirley Ingram. Richard, where are you from? Bloomingsburg, Kentucky. All right. And did you just hear about this tree decorating uh, event, or were, did you just happen to be in town? I, we just happened to be in town. We're, we're here visiting, and we heard about this, and we couldn't wait to get here. We're from the Bluegrass State, not the land of the muse, but the land of the horses. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we, we will concede that Kentucky has beautiful grass and the most beautiful horses in the world. Right. But now, our mules are beautiful too, wouldn't you admit? And, nice. and this is another fundraising idea that the Arts Alliance had. And all of these mules represent our history because mules were used in mining, farming, and they were so important to our history. And that was the idea when they selected the mule for the Arts Alliance project. So you'll see these beautiful decorated mules all over town. But we want you to look around and pick out a tree that you really like. Okay. Okay, okay. okay. can we take it home? Well, and I forgot to say that your name is Shirley Lee, Lee. Ingram. And you were in town for a big Thanksgiving celebration so with our brother. And you're a house guest of Larry and Margaret. Good evening, and we want to welcome you. My name is Alan Beasley, and we're glad to have all of you downtown this, after, this evening. We gather on an event that centers around Christmas. That's just not a date on the calendar. That's a time we celebrate the birth of Christ. And that's an important part of what Hope for Women does, is they talk about Christ in people's lives. So we want to honor that tonight. We want to begin our, you know, the, our program as such with a time of prayer. So I want to invite you, if you can just steal your heart and mind for just a few minutes, and let's pray together, and let's give thanks to God who 
gives us this opportunity to be together. Let's pray together. Father, we just thank you for uh, the beauty of this night that we gather, this creation that you've given us, the birth of your son, Jesus Christ, that we have every opportunity to invite into our heart and life and live for him. Lord, it gives us this opportunity to come together in a Christmas season and enjoy what we get to enjoy downtown for the next month. And we thank you for that, Father. Father, we pray your blessings upon our time together tonight. And in this season of Christmas, may each one of us discover again the birth of Christ in our life. Thank you for loving us, Lord, by sending your Son to die for us. We celebrate his birth tonight. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.